This is Gavin Cruz from James Madison High School here with Detective Philip Glass. How are you doing this morning? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. So, um, why don't we? Why don't you start off by explaining to me what you actually do in your job? Well, as I'm the emergency management coordinator for the city of Pleasanton, and I'm also a firefighter and EMT. Uh, I'm, I'm a former detective for the city. Uh, I transferred over from the police department over to the fire department. So uh, emergency management coordinator, you know, just it's preparing uh, the city for uh, disasters, either natural, man-made, uh, et cetera, uh, mitigation, you know, just all the above, you know, just getting the city ready and making sure that, that we have the things that we need and, and the training that we need uh, for a disaster. It doesn't get stressful at times. It does. Um, you know, we have upwards of 14,000 people here in town. So having to manage the, the, the health and safety of, of these individuals is very stressful. Uh, making sure that they have what they need to uh, continue on with, with their lives. So what does a typical day in your field of work look like? Um, I come in and I help the fire guys out. Uh, we do truck checks and stuff like that. And then once all of the fire trucks and stuff are, are good to go for the day, I'll come into my office. I'll, I'll, I'll check my emails. Uh, I'll, I'll make contact with um, individuals like the Red Cross, HEB, Walmart, uh, trying to make sure that we have the things that we need uh, for shelters and for day-to-day uh, -day, uh, things for the people of town you know like currently like, i'm sure you remember uh, there was a ppe shortage uh, all over the united states so that was one of my first goals and tasks was to get enough ppe to supply our primary care physicians our urgent cares our hospital here in town and things like that and now i've got thousands upon thousands of pieces of ppe um, so any, even somebody from the general public who doesn't have a mask can come and ask me, hey, I need a mask, I'm going to provide them a mask. Uh, I need hand sanitizer, so then I'll give them some hand sanitizer, you know, things like that. So um, that's my general day-to-day -day stuff. And then um, I review emergency management plans uh, for the local businesses, uh, for our, um, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> the, uh, uh, nursing homes, for example, you know, that's a community all in itself outside of the, the, the normal community that we that we're used to. Uh, so their emergency management plans are a little different than Walmarts or HEBs. So they'll they'll bring them to me and then I'll review them and make sure that they coincide with the cities and counties and states emergency management plans. That way, you know, everybody is, is safe and, and uh, good to go. Does every business from you know, small to large, you know, have an emergency plan of some sort. They do. And, you know, like I, I was explaining to one of the guys the other day, even if it's a, a, a taco stand on the corner, you know, one of the little sheds, you know, what would you think an emergency management plan would be? Well, if it catches fire, you're going to walk across the street and call 911. That's a plan. Whether it's, whether it's a small plan or it's a massive plan having to deal with a million people, it's a plan. Um, and it doesn't have to be some fancy, you know, sitting in three inch three ring binder. No, on a single piece of paper, you know, hey, here's my plan. Tell me what you think. You know, HEB, Walmart, they're a little different. You know, they've got thousands of people in those stores every day. You know, so they're a little bit different. And if, say, one of these businesses or stores doesn't have an emergency plan, what, what is your job then to do? Our job is to encourage them to have that, okay? Because you can also have um, insurance deductions and uh, grants and things like that, that that you know require those emergency management plans. Uh, insurance companies are the biggest. You know, um, if you don't have a plan, then they're, a lot of times they'll tell you, "Hey, we're not going to insure you for what you want," you know, because you don't have a plan. So most businesses are required to have them. Do you help uh, any businesses make emergency plans? I, I, I do when I can. Um, they'll come to me and say, hey, I'm starting from scratch, help me out. 
okay, well, I'll go to their business and I'll say, and we'll, we'll develop what's called a site map. You know, generally it's a Google overlay of, of their, their location, you know, and we'll develop uh, evacuation routes, uh, meetup points. Uh, I'll do a walkthrough in the building and, and with, the, with the fire marshal here. And uh, we'll ensure, you know, that they're safe there and then we'll develop a plan around with what they have. You know, again, if it's just as simple as walking across the street and calling 911, then that's what it's going to be. You know, so yes, we do uh, help businesses here in town. How long have you been in this field of work? Um, I got started in 1996 as a firefighter. Uh, I did that for 19 years. Um, and in 2000, I went to the police academy. Uh, I'm in my, currently, I'm in my 20th year of law enforcement. Uh, in 2005, I joined the United States Army as a medic. Uh, so I did that for eight years. And so now I'm kind of winding down my career. Um, and as an emergency management coordinator, you take all of those experiences as a firefighter, police officer, EMT, and coordinate all those. And, and it, it's, uh, it sure makes the job a little more, it makes it easier to understand uh, how to handle the stress and the emergencies and stuff like that. So, by the, by the sounds of it, you've been a lot of places in your life. Oh yes, sir. Oh, where have you been? Um, well, I was, I was, I guess you could say I was fortunate enough in the, in, in the military that I was never deployed. Um, but as a medic, I worked in a lot of the hospitals in the United States. I worked uh, at Bamsey in the emergency room over there. I worked, or SAMC, is it, you know, as it may be. Um, I worked in Madigan Army Hospital up in Washington, Fort Lewis, Washington. Uh, I've been to Fort Knox, Kentucky. I've been to Oklahoma, Florida. I've just kind of been all over the United States, Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, and did some things there. Um, great time of my life. So is there a hospital you enjoyed working at? Um, I really enjoyed working at, at uh, Bamsey. You know, uh, you got a lot of different kinds of people that come in. Um, and you get to know a lot of people. You know, you, you develop a camaraderie with your fellow medics and nurses and, and doctors, and it's a camaraderie not seen in other places. Uh, the closest I, I could see it as being is in firefighting and in law enforcement. You know, the, the people that you come to work with are, we can, we're considered family. You know, we, we hang out together, we, um, we laugh and joke and cry and, and, you know, all together. And it's just, it's, it's just a whole, family uh, unit, you know. Well, what are some challenges you face in your job? Um, the biggest challenge is getting people to understand the importance of being prepared. You know, it, it's it, a lot. I've seen a lot of people say, well, that's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. And then when it does, they're, they're not prepared. You know, it's like the old cartoon where the ant is preparing for for winter and the grasshopper is just like, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, procrastination is, is, is the worst. Um, so we prepare for the worst and hope for the best, you know. Um, so getting people to understand that is the largest challenge, you know. Have you ever had any issues with anybody uh, or any businesses or anything like that? Um, so far, no. Uh, our community here is, is very understanding. Um, and not just in the fire side or, or the law enforcement side, you know, when, generally when when we explain something to the public, they're very understanding, you know, and it's kind of a light bulb moment. You know, you're like, hey, well, you got to do this. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Let's do it. You know, there hasn't really been any pushback whatsoever. Okay. So you mentioned you were a former detective. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Um... I was a, I got hired here for the city uh, in 2015. Uh, November will be my fifth year here. And after spending a year on patrol, uh, I was promoted to detective. And I spent four years, well, almost four years uh, as a detective for the city. Uh, and then when all of the pandemic stuff hit, uh, they, they saw that, that, you know, I've got the experience and, and everything to do with emergency management and I have a degree in Homeland Security. So I was asked to take over this position and there you go. 
is there any stories you can tell me or a little bit of insight about your detective work? Um, it's not like it is on TV, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, a lot of long hours, being on call, getting woken up at two in the morning, uh, leaving the family, you know. Uh, patrol is, you know, you work from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sometimes you have, you know, you gotta spend a little bit more time uh, out on the street collecting a little bit of overtime. Uh, but as a detective, you know, you get off at five o'clock and if you're on call, you, know, you can get home, get changed, just sit down to eat dinner and then you get a call that, you know, something's happened and you have to get out there and kind of do your job. Um, but it was fun, it really was. And, and I would never trade that experience for anything. Um, you know, you, you see the, the ups and the downs of, of the people around you, you know, um, and just like in law enforcement in general, you know, there's a lot of happy moments, but those happy moments can turn and it's not happy anymore. You know, it's time to get down to work. It's time to get down to business and get things done. You know? So did you have any schooling for any, any of this? I mean, from your fire management to be a detective, did you, you know, Oh, they're, they're, it's continuous education, continuous. You know, um, when I left high school in 98, uh, it's just been a constant, you know, you gotta do this class, gotta do that class, gotta do this, you gotta do that. Um, and back in 2016, I decided, well, you know, I'll just go to college, you know, what the heck, right? So, um, I was fortunate enough that the college that I went to took all of my work experience and provided college credit for me. Um, and so I took a four year degree and completed it in two years. Um, so, but that's that's something that a lot of, maybe a lot of people don't understand is when you go into law enforcement and firefighting and EMS and, and the first responder and, you know, lifestyle, it's just continuous education and just continuously doing it. You know, um, if, if and if you're not, you're not only failing yourself, but you're failing the people that you're trying to help. Is there anything you don't enjoy about your job? Any of your jobs? Well, any of the jobs you've had? Uh, I I, I don't enjoy the the I'm trying to figure out a way to word it to where it's it's appropriate. <laughs> You know the 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 destruction, the death. The, I, I don't enjoy that. Nobody does. You know, and um, I can recall a, a situation that happened back in 1988. That, that you know, a, a guy got hit by a car, and everything was going fine. But the only thing I could hear was his wife and daughter screaming in the background that's the hard part you know um, and, and I've said it many times before and, and quite honestly I don't know if it's appropriate for here but it would be okay if people didn't have to know you know that that you know their family members died you know they're they you know I just it, it's the the, the telling of the parents that their kid is, de is dead it's the telling of the of the kids that their parents are dead you know that that's that's the hardest part of this job you know if nobody had to find out it'd be the greatest job in the world you know um and it would be a little bit easier but that's just not the way it works and personally how do you deal with the stress from situations like that um i have a close network um as a matter of fact my sister is one of y'all's teachers over there at madison uh miss tolbert uh, she, uh, her and her husband, uh, and myself, we've been doing this for a lot of years and we're able to talk to each other. Um, and my wife, she's a registered nurse for a hospital. You know, I can talk to her, you know, talking is a, is a huge factor in it, you know, because you're, you're not alone. People have gone through what you've gone through, if not once, many times, you know, um, and, and not for myself, but a lot of, 
law enforcement, military, firefighting, you know, those are the top careers where alcoholism and suicide rate is, is just the number one in, in the United States. And so over the past you know, 20 years, they've seen that and they've developed uh, programs for individuals like myself and the fire guys and, and stuff like that to be able to go and talk to somebody. Um, it, it wasn't, there wasn't so much of that many years ago. Back then it was, I'll just deal with it, just deal with it. And that's why we've become, you know, the number one rated, you know, for alcoholism, divorce rates, uh, suicide rates, you know, stuff like that. And you learn to open yourself up to those individuals that you trust. You know, um, I've talked to my sister, Mrs. Tolbert, several times about things. I've talked to my brother-in-law about things. I've talked to my wife about things, you know, and there's a certain level of trust, you know, and, and I think that's, that's how I deal with it. Well, what's the most exciting thing? Well, excuse me. What's the most surprising thing about working in your industry? Something that people don't understand or they wouldn't know that you actually do? Um, that's a tough question. Uh, well, for one, I mean, a lot of people don't even know I'm here. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't see the, the behind the scenes thing. You know, they just, you know, if a tornado came through town, they just expect there to be a shelter. They just expect there to be three meals a day and a cot and somewhere to go. They don't understand everything that takes place to get that done. Um, so when you bring somebody into the office and they're like, wow, I didn't know you did all that. You know, it, it, it's kind of a great feeling, but on the other hand, it's just like, well, somebody has to do it, you know? Um, but I have days where I don't have a whole lot to do. You know, I just sit here and I go out here, fire guys and play firemen for a little while and, you know, come back, check emails. But, um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people are surprised that the, the level of it and intensity of, of, of the things I do just to try to make sure people are safe. Yeah. Well, that's very cool to know, actually. So before we end our segment, is there anything you would like to say to the students, um, you know? Man, there's a lot of things that can be said. Um, for those that are interested in any of these career fields, um, get with with people like Ms. Tolbert uh, and the other individuals that, that teach the criminal uh, justice side, that teach, um, you know, any of the emergency management stuff. Um, sit down with them, get to know them, um, ask them as many questions as you can. You know, just like I, my door is always open to, to people, you know, come and talk to us. That's a career field that you're willing, you're, you're willing and wanting to get into. Um, ask a lot of questions. Um, I encourage people or those that can join the military. Get out of your bubble, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Go and explore the world, go and do things, you know, and then come back and take all of that experience and, and build on that. You know, so don't just you know go to college and sit behind a desk for you know for 25 years you know go out and do something with yourself you know stay out of trouble <coughs> say no to drugs you know all that good stuff <coughs> excuse me so um yeah you know just sit and talk to people you get to learn you get to, you get to know these people 